Hi everyone, we are going to talk about synthetic polymers. Uh, some amazing things that we've made, that we've synthesized, that have really helped mankind. There's the um, disadvantage that these can be difficult to recycle or if you put them in the environment, they can be harmful, uh, but they have been really helpful. There's this balance. We just have to be really responsible with them. Let me give you an overview of how polymers work. Polymers are large molecules that are made up of these repeating units that are smaller molecules, and we call those little repeating units monomers. You take the monomers and they are just covalently bonded together. So a synthetic polymer specifically is something that man has made, that we synthesized in the lab. The uh, nature that we see around us, oh, there's polymers everywhere, polymers everywhere. Uh, synthetic are just polymers that we specifically have derived and synthesized in the lab. Here are some examples of polymers that we've made, synthetic polymers, soft drink bottles, plastic bags, food wrap, CDs, Teflon, styrofoam. And as I say those, you're thinking about, oh, those are all the things that we need to recycle, that we don't want to just put into the back into the environment because they don't break down easily. We have to be really responsible. We make these and they're helpful, but then we have to be responsible to take care of them after we use them. Uh, so let me give you the overview of how these work. The basic formation, you take an alkene that has the double bond, you're going to break that and form an alkane that forms that single bond, and then you just join these monomers together, these small units together. I have a very basic uh, monomer that I want to show you is going to be the ethene, the ethene. And this is actually the base for a lot of the polymers that we've synthesized. Here it is, I've put three monomers up here. You have three ethene. We're going to break these double bonds right over here. Uh, so you're adding uh, now the monomers to each other. And notice how I drew this. I do a squiggly line right here and a squiggly line over there. You can have a thousand of these connected together. Okay, you can have a lot of these monomers connected together. That creates a polymer. This process of breaking the double bond and then forming a single bond in between all the monomers, that's called polymerization, polymerization. Now there are three that I'd like to give you some specifics on. PVC, oh actually let's come back to this. I'll show you how these three specific ones work. What we do is you take the ethene, okay, and this is a basic example. There are other monomers, but this is a really common one. You take that ethene and you add some substituent to it, and I want to call that substituent Z. So you have the CH2 double bonded to the CH, and then there's a Z, some substituent. And I wanted to have many, 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 many of these. I'm just showing two, all right? I'm just showing two right here. So you have these two monomers, and then when they combine, I did a skeletal structure for you right here, that Z is attached every third carbon. So you have this repeating carbon, 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 carbon chain with a repeating substituent every third carbon. That's a polymer. So examples. PVC, you've maybe heard of PVC pipes. I know that uh, we use this in our sprinkler system. I live in a dry area, so we have to water our grass. Uh, we also use these in our plumbing because they last really well. The monomer for this has one chlorine attached to the ethene, to that ethene. Uh, so you have the one chlorine. So I just wrote two examples here, and then you're going to add a lot of these monomers together. Look what happens you have a chlorine every third carbon. Every third carbon, there's a chlorine attached and it makes that PVC pipe. Two more examples um, are polypropylene syringes. Those are made from the monomer that has an, another carbon attached to it, in essence, a methyl group. So instead of being CH2 double bonded to CH2, it's CH2 double bonded to a carbon with one hydrogen and one methyl, a CH3. So when we combine a lot of these monomers together, you're going to have that methyl group. I, if I was doing the Z right here, you'd have a methyl group on all of those. Every third carbon, you've got a methyl group. Teflon, unique. It has no hydrogens and fluorines in place of the hydrogens. So you have your carbon, double bonded carbon with uh, two fluorines on each of those. So if I were to draw this, you're going to have those fluorines on every carbon. So you're going to have the uh, two fluorines, the two fluorines, the two fluorines. 
and that's going to be on every single carbon. And that's your Teflon. So kind of fun. Learning about polymers, again, nature beautifully does this, but nature is able to break down the polymers that it has created, that it has. When we make the polymers, take these base monomers, add them together, it's harder for them to be broken down through natural processes. They have helped life, we just have to be responsible with them. Nice. Thanks for being here. Have a good day.